You see, that's the formulaic approach. Bible study plus fellowship plus prayer equals being filled with the Spirit. And now I can be all that that I want to be. I can lose that that five pounds that's clinging to my stomach. I can stop getting upset with my kids. My marriage will improve. All of those things will be true. You know what? They might be true, but that's not the point. And it's not what the Spirit is after. You see, Brooks, I'm really confused because I've read Galatians 5, and I know what the fruit of the Spirit are, and that would be true of anybody that's filled with the Spirit. Yes, but that's not the destination. That's not the destination. That's kind of a side effect of what happens when a person's filled with the Spirit. You see, a formulaic approach to Christianity, it's the focus is on the fruit. It sees Jesus as a means to an end to get a better life. And that's why we write books about it. Our students say we have never written a book. That's why you go to the, go to the Christian bookstore and look at all the books on how to, how to have a better marriage. By the way, should you have a better marriage? Of course you should have a better marriage. How to organize your finances. How to get more out of life. How to, how to, how to, how to, how to, how to. How to tie a tie. Five different knots, not just the one you learned in 1988. Fill in the blank. Sees Jesus as a means to an end to get a better life and seeks to add activities, Bible reading, prayer, fellowship. All of these things are great things, but it seeks to add them so that we can, in fact, bear fruit and arrive at a destination. It's a very man-centered approach. Here's Jesus' approach. He says, no, I'm not going to give you a formula. I'm going to give you a person. I'm going to give you a person. Jesus says in John chapter 14, where do we start a few weeks back? What, What Scripture? What was kind of the base? It seems to be the base of where we're at. John what? John 15, if you remain in me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will bear much fruit. Here's what precedes it. Here's what precedes it. This is all all framed in uh, 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 a monologue with his disciples just before he goes out to be arrested. He's preparing them for his departure. He's getting them ready. Now, we've looked at the whole abide in me, let my words abide in you, and you will bear much fruit. We've looked at that in the last two weeks. But here's what he says he's going to do to make sure that that actually happens. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Parakletos is helper. That's the word. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and I'll ask the Father. What's Jesus going to go to the Father and ask ask Dad to do? He's going to ask Dad to give us another, and he refers to him, and he calls him Parakletos, or helper. The Greek is, refers to helper. It could be translated counselor, helper. And to be with you forever. And then he identifies, okay, here's the identity of that, that helper. That's the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees. What's the pronoun? What's the pronoun? Neither, neither sees what? Read it. What's it say out loud? Him. You mean it's not an it? No, it's not an it. God does not give you and I a formula. He gives you and I a person. And that person indwells us and lives with us and walks alongside of us and has fellowship, intimate fellowship with us. And we're clamoring for A plus B plus C. He says, I'm not going to give you A plus B plus C. I'm going to give you a person. You already know him. Look at the text. You already know him, for he dwells with you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know my theology. The Holy Spirit doesn't come until Pentecost, and that's 40 days after the the ascension. I, I don't get it. He dwells with you. Who's he speaking of? 
himself, and he will be in you. Who's he speaking of? Some of you are like really confused right now. You're like, I don't know. Is it the Spirit or is it Jesus? Yes, it's both. That's the point. You already know him. What did he tell the disciples earlier in this chapter? Thomas says, I don't get it. Or is it Philip? I think it's Philip. How can we tell? You tell us we've already seen the Father. How, show us the Father. What does Jesus respond? You've already seen him. What? You've seen me. I'm in the Father and he's in me. That's the point. Jesus doesn't give us a formula. He gives us a person. You'll know him. For he dwells with you and he will be in you. Then he says in verse 25 and 26 of that same same chapter, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. That is, in the flesh, before the crucifixion. But the helper, the parakletos, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you. What will he teach us? What will he teach us? All things and bring to your remembrance what? What is this person that's going to indwell us and walk alongside of us? What is he going to reveal to us? What does it say? Everything that I've said to you. Everything that I've said to you. The Spirit keeps pointing to Jesus. Verse 15, chapter 15, verse 26, after he does the whole abide and I'm the vine, you're the branches talk. He says, when the helper comes, the parakletos, whom I will send from the Father, he will do what? What is this parakletos, this helper, going to do as he indwells us? What's he going to do? He's going to bear witness to me. To me. And then in John chapter 16, the next chapter, it says the Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will glorify who? Me, not Brooks, but Christ. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Spirit will teach you all things. He will remind you of all things that Christ has told us. He'll bear witness witness to Christ. The Spirit will guide us into all truth, and he He will glorify Christ. He'll take what is mine and declare it to you. This is what Jesus says. We do not receive a formula. You see, too many Christians view the Holy Spirit as an it and not a he. It is a he. It has a personality. Oh, my gosh, did you hear what I just said? I said it has a personality. I just violate. We are so, this is so hard. I've never seen the Holy Spirit. I can't touch it. There's no felt paintings of, of him. I can't. No, there isn't. But it's not an it. It's a he. It has personality. It's the Spirit of Christ. This is what we want to do. We want a formula. We view the Spirit as a, as a kind of spiritual high-octane fuel that we pour into our tanks. Oh, to be filled with the Spirit. Well, that's kind of like what you do when you take your car and you put the premium gasoline. So the gasoline is like the Spirit. and that Im- No, that's not it. Gasoline has no personality. It's just fuel. The Holy Spirit, we, when we impersonalize the Holy Spirit, we make the Spirit less than the Spirit is. And it robs Christ of his glory and of his majesty. God does not want to give us a a, a formula so that we can bear fruit. He wants to give us a person so that we will bear fruit. And that person is Christ. Walking in the Spirit is walking with Christ because the Spirit is the Spirit of Christ indwelling us. Being led by the Spirit is being led by Christ because the Spirit of Christ is Christ leading us. Being filled with the Spirit is being filled with Christ because the Spirit is Christ filling us. This is not an impersonal force that we get if we just read the right number of Bible verses and just pray the right kind of prayers and go to the right kind of meetings. Do you understand that?